Everyone knows that supplements like NAC or whey can increase glutathione levels. But today I want to talk about the glutathione boosters that no one talks about, even though they make a huge difference in your levels and how your body uses and recycles glutathione. If you are low in these, you can take all the standard glutathione supplements, but they just won't work as well. So your body might make more of it, but it won't use it properly. That means you will be wasting money and also missing out on most of the benefits. So in this video, I will show you the forgotten nutrients that support the glutathione enzymes, cofactors and detox pathways behind the scenes. So the stuff that actually keeps your glutathione system running at full capacity. Let's start with a trace mineral that doesn't get nearly enough attention, selenium. Selenium is one of those nutrients that your body needs in only very tiny amounts but it plays an absolutely massive role in your antioxidant defenses. If you're missing it or are low in it, a whole bunch of critical systems will start to break down. And when it comes to glutathione, selenium is critical for the function of a key enzyme called glutathione peroxidase. Here's what actually happens inside your cells. When your body is under stress, so that can be from pollution, inflammation, infections, or just your normal metabolism, it produces reactive molecules like hydrogen peroxide. These are dangerous if they build up because they can damage proteins, fats and even DNA. So your body has a cleanup crew ready to go and glutathione peroxidase is one of the main workers on that crew. This enzyme's job is to neutralize the hydrogen peroxide by turning it into water and the only reason it can do that is because it contains selenium built right into its structure. This exact selenium site is what actually allows the enzyme to break down hydrogen peroxide in the first place. So again, if you're low in selenium, it's not just that the enzyme works slower, it might not work at all. Your body might still be making plenty of glutathione, but it won't be using it effectively because glutathione peroxidase won't be able to do its job. That means more oxidative stress, more cellular damage, and a lot more pressure on your other detox systems. The best sources for selenium are Brazil nuts and just one or two a day can give you enough. And if you want to supplement, go for selenium yeast or selenomethionine, which are more bioavailable than inorganic versions like sodium selenite. A dose from around 100 to 200 microgram per day is a good starting dose. The next nutrient I want to talk about is even less well known than selenium and it's molybdenum. It's another trace mineral that plays a behind the scenes role in supporting glutathione by helping detox pathways run more smoothly, especially the ones that create toxic byproducts that glutathione has to clean up. Here's how this works. When glutathione neutralizes toxins, it sometimes creates sulfite as a byproduct, especially when detoxing sulfur based compounds. Sulfite is toxic in excess and needs to be converted into harmless sulfate. That reaction is powered by the enzyme sulfite oxidase and this enzyme depends pretty much completely on molybdenum. Molybdenum also helps break down acetaldehyde, so a toxic byproduct of alcohol and candida, which also puts a heavy load on glutathione. Now, when we talk about molybdenum, I have to mention that an outright deficiency, like the kind that you see in medical textbooks, is extremely rare. Your body only needs trace amounts of it and most people get enough from food and the water that they drink. So in the traditional sense, almost no one is clinically deficient. But here's the catch. Just because you're not deficient on paper doesn't mean your body is getting what it needs functionally. In fact, functional molybdenum deficiency is kind of common, especially in people who have issues tolerating sulfur containing foods or sulfur based supplements. Think of people who get headaches, brain fog, fatigue or nausea when they start taking NAC, MSM or when they eat sulfur rich foods like garlic and onions. That's often a sign that their sulfide detox pathway is sluggish, which can be upregulated with molybdenum supplements. A common dosage would be between 100 and 200 micrograms per day. And my favorite form is potassium molybdate, but it's not available everywhere. So see which one you can get wherever you live. Third, we have sulforaphane and this natural compound is super interesting. It's found in cruciferous vegetables, especially broccoli sprouts. And it doesn't work directly on glutathione itself. Instead, it flips the switch on your detox and antioxidant genes. Well, the way it works is through activating something called the NRF2 pathway. NRF2 is like a master control switch 
inside your cells. When it's turned on, it tells your DNA to ramp up production of a bunch of protective enzymes, especially the ones that help your body deal with oxidative stress and detoxification. One of the most important groups of enzymes that NRF2 activates are those related to glutathione metabolism. For example, this includes glutamate cysteine ligase, GCL, which is the rate limiting step in glutathione synthesis. In simple terms, GCL controls how fast your body can actually make glutathione from its amino acid building blocks, so cysteine, glycine, and glutamate. If GCL is running low, it doesn't matter how much NAC you take. Your body can produce enough glutathione to meet demands. Sulforaphane also increases levels of glutathione reductase, so the enzyme that recycles used up glutathione back into its active form. This two-part approach, so boosting production and boosting recycling, makes sulforaphane one of the most effective ways to strengthen your entire antioxidant defense system. The only problem is that you don't actually get sulforaphane directly from broccoli. Instead, when you chew or chop it, an enzyme called myrosinase is released, which converts a precursor into sulforaphane in your body. How much sulforaphane actually lands in your system also depends on how much you cook the broccoli, since heat destroys myrosinase. So the best natural source are actually fresh broccoli sprouts, which can have up to 100 times more sulforaphane than just normal broccoli. You can also buy it in supplemental form, and here you have a very big range of possible doses, usually somewhere in the 10 to 200 milligram range. The last compound I want to talk about is melatonin. Everyone knows melatonin as the sleep hormone, but it does way more than just regulate your circadian rhythm. Melatonin is also a powerful antioxidant on its own right, and it directly stimulates the production of glutathione. One of the key ways melatonin does this is by increasing the activity of glutamate cysteine ligase and glutathione reductase, so the exact enzymes that we just talked about in relation to sulforaphane. This means melatonin can also upregulate glutathione production and its recycling. And because it's also an antioxidant itself, it can scavenge free radicals on its own. So that will reduce the overall oxidative burden and it will spare glutathione from being used up too quickly. On top of that, keep in mind that much of glutathione production and repair happens at night. And if melatonin improves your sleep quality, it will also improve your glutathione levels. The best way to naturally support melatonin is to reduce blue light exposure at night, sleep in complete darkness, and get some sunlight in the morning. But melatonin supplements also work for a lot of people, and low doses, even just half a milligram or one milligram, can already be a game changer. Of course, others might need more of it, but if you're just getting started, go with a low dose and see how your body reacts. Great, now that we covered the four most underrated glutathione supporters, let me say that there are a number of other compounds and vitamins that help your body process and recycle glutathione better. I actually recorded an entire video on this that I will link in the description. You don't necessarily have to supplement all of them or even most of them, but it does make sense to be aware of the biochemical pathways that glutathione relies on so that you can identify bottlenecks if something isn't working right. So please don't overcomplicate things here, but make sure that your whole system is running and that your body is getting the nutrients that it needs for antioxidant protection and detoxification. Also, if you're looking for even more info on this, exact supplement dosages and dedicated protocols for things like microplastic elimination, heavy metals, excess estrogen, or forever chemicals, make sure to check the description where I link my detox masterclass. It shows you how to optimize your detox pathways, including your glutathione system, to get rid of all of these toxins and everything that we're exposed to every day. It covers diet, supplements, and much more. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.